Hey there, and welcome to this FileMaker tutorial video. My name is Matt Petrowski, bringing you these tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. Welcome to this tutorial, and we are taking a look at a topic of a relationship overview. This is a beginner's quick tip, and we're going to talk about the relationship types. Let's take a look at the file. So the first thing I'd like to point out is if you are interested in learning more about FileMaker Pro, you can always check out my more advanced content at FileMakerMagazine.com. Let's head into the relationship. So you can follow along by creating your own file. I've created a file called Relationship Types, and we can take a look at the relationships by going into the relationship graph. Now the key thing to understand about FileMaker's relationships is that these are not just for data. In fact, this graph is going to be a representation of not only your data, but also your user interface. And as a beginner, that's a key thing that you need to know. The relationship types will be many in terms of what you need to get out of your data, both for presentation and for the structure of the data. So in this file, I have two tables. I have a parent and a child table. And remember, when you're creating your tables, you typically want to go for a more general approach than you do for a specific approach. And by that, I mean, a lot of the times a newer FileMaker developer will create a customers and a vendors table or a students and a teachers and a faculty and a staff table. In that scenario, you have four different tables holding the same thing. They are all holding information about a person or people if you want to use the plural. So my suggestion is keep things general. If this was a parent to child relationship, which you're going to have for most all of your tables, I tend to call my tables people and then whatever they're relating to. Details, if it's the information about the person, tracking phone number, address, etc. Those are details that belong to that particular person. And then within the person table, I'm able to classify those people as a student, an assistant instructor, or a customer and a vendor, because it is possible to have a person who is both a customer and a vendor to you. So when you start tracking information that is the same in multiple separate tables, not as good of an outcome. But let's talk about those relationships. So once we have our parent and child structure, we're going to have our two table occurrences right here between our parent and our child. Now your primary key is always going to be something that uniquely identifies all of the data that's in that table. I keep things simple and I always call my primary key always in all tables ID. And that works out great within FileMaker because FileMaker always has the prefix of the table occurrence name with the double colon, bunk, bunk, and then ID. Now when it comes to a foreign key, I keep things just as simple. I simply name it ID, but then I give it the postfix of underscore and then whatever table it's going to relate to. So when I drag from ID to ID parent, we can take a look at the relationship type. The first thing we're going to notice is that this side does not look like that side, and that is because this is a one to many relationship. And many times you will see a many to many relationship, but in this scenario, you will typically only have, or you will always only have, provided you've applied constraints such as unique or any other things that says this ID there is only one that ever exists of this record with this ID in this database. So there's only ever one record in that table. And it, of course, can relate to as many different child records. So if we think of this in the terms of a person, and we're going to track details, phone number, address, email, what have you, about this person, then this one person is going to be, out, be able to have many or multiple different details. Now that is the most common relationship and that is right there the equijoin. You're going to see the equijoin in your solution probably I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the time. So what are the rest of the relationships used for? Well they're used for all kinds of different things mostly for filtering. So when you hear this word filtering within FileMaker, when it comes to relationships, you are using the relationships in order to get data out for the purpose of presentation. Most of your relationships that deal with structure are going to be equijoins. Very rarely will you have something else and there's a small percentage, but it is possible. So remember in the relationship graph, I believe I already mentioned it, the relationship graph is a mix of what your relational structure is from the way that you structure the data, commonly known as an ERD, and then also your UI. Everything is wrapped up into the relationship graph. It is not a strict ERD just dealing with data and structure, and it is also not just a graph dealing with the way that you're going to present your data, the UI. So 
here are the different types that we have. A non-equa join. When might you use a non-equa join? This has been used by myself commonly when I want to omit the record that I'm actually on with a self-relationship. Wow, self-relationship. We'll have to get into that. I have videos that I cover over on FileMaker Magazine dot com about that but for the most part a non equa join means that when I select this this means for this ID give me every record in the child table that does not equal this ID so it's basically just the inverse of what you typically want to see so if I think about this from a person to details view this would be if I'm looking at this person Matt Petrowski if I use the equa join that is give me all of his details if I switch that to a non equa join it is give me all of the details of all other people that have relationships so that may not be something that you want, but in those rare instances, you do want to use it. Most commonly, I've used this in order to omit a particular value out of a given portal. Greater than, greater than, and equal to, or excuse me, which one is that? I always do this. I always hold up these right there, and I know it's the left hand is the lesser than in terms of the uh, way that the sign is. So this is the less than and less than or equal to the greater and the greater than and equal to and then the Cartesian join. So this group of these four right here are basically used for pulling out a range of data. Most commonly you're going to use these with dates and times. Um, you also use them with numbers but that is where I've used these relationships most of the time is when you want to pull out a range of time. So if you want to see a month of records within a portal, then you're going to probably use the greater than and less than, and you're going to have a starting date and an ending date that tell the relationship when that relationship is going to filter. Again, remember that word filter. We are filtering data out of the full data set. If you have data that spans for the whole year of 2019, but you only want to see the month of March, well, then you're going to need to filter that out using the starting month and the end or the starting day and the ending day within that month. And in that scenario, you will be using the greater than, the less than, the less than equal to, greater than, and greater than equal to. And finally, we have the Cartesian product. Now, this is an interesting one. As far as I can say off the top of my head, I haven't, I didn't go to Wikipedia right before this, but the Cartesian join is more or less the combination of all possible sets. You can look that up on Wikipedia or leave a comment down below if I'm incorrect. But this is basically taking all records in one side and all records in another side and figuring out all the different ways that all those records could possibly combine. Now you have to be careful with this one because obviously if you have a lot of records in one table and a lot of records in another table, all of those possible combinations means that FileMaker would have to think a lot. But the most simplest way to think about this the X is basically give me everything. It's also known as a cross join. Some uh, developers will call it that and you will hear that term. But for the most part, it is basically used to show me everything. Now, when you have a small number of records on one side and a larger set of records on the other side, that's when it's going to work a little bit better because obviously the number of combinations from small to large is going to be a lot easier. But remember, the more records that you get on one side just means that's more computations that FileMaker or more combinations that FileMaker has to do. So you always want to be aware of what the relationship is going to cause when you're on the actual layout. If I'm on a layout with a simple equa join, I'm looking at Matt and I know that Matt only has the possibility of having 10 total individual details. That's a lot different than if I go onto a record using a Cartesian join where I'm looking at a record and looking to combine against let's say 10,000 individual different parts in a manufacturing process where I've got all those parts, there might be a better solution to that in terms of structuring your data. And again, it all depends on your user interface. The next part we have about relationships, something that we'll get into probably in another video or you can research on my magazine website, is multiple predicates. Down here, we have all of the different values that we will use. And in this scenario, uh, we'll just do a pretend one right here. Let's say, for example, I'm going to use the created timestamp. And I'm going to say that the created timestamp needs to be uh, greater than 
the created timestamp in the host. I'll click change here and I will add a new predicate. Now each one of these is called a predicate. Now in a date-based relationship you'll probably have something that looks like this. This is actually completely wonky right here. Um, but the way that it works is you will have a range now, and this doesn't make sense with these created timestamps, but on one side you'll have a start field and you'll also have an end field, and over here you'll probably have the same date field. It could be the created timestamp, it could be the uh, invoice date or the invoice time, what have you, but it will look like this where you have a greater than and a greater than less than or a less than and a less than a greater than equals to. I think you get the idea. It's basically trying to pull out that range that we talked about earlier where we're trying to filter out March out of the whole of the year of 2019. Now when it comes to trying to do that, remember if your date value is originally stored as a timestamp, that timestamp internally is a numerical number incrementing from by seconds from a given point in time. I think it's uh, 111 in FileMaker or year one. Uh, in Linux or Unix, it's probably 1-1, one, one, I think 1971 or something like that. You'd have to check me on that. But basically, you have to break that date down into its individual parts. If you only wanted to find all records that were in the month of March in 2019, you have to take your timestamp value and then you need to create some calculated values, stored calculated values, mind you, not unstored. Those stored calculated values would say get the month number using FileMaker's month functions and then also get the year. So you would have to take that original timestamp value, create two additional fields that are going to break the data down into the parts that you need just for the purpose in order to filter the values out using your relationship that we have right here. And that is fundamentally our overview of relationship types. Again, your most common is going to be the equal join, 90% of the time. non equal joins, you'll know it when you need it. Greater than, less than, you're going to use those whenever you're going to want to filter out a range using numbers, dates, and times. And then the Cartesian join, that's when you want to show a list of everything within a portal so that maybe users could use that as a pick list. But of course there's other ways to do a pick list within FileMaker. You can do that using a card window and going to a list view or a number of other methods as well. So I hope this has helped you out with regards to your journey with FileMaker Pro. This has been a FileMaker quick tip. Again, you can find more information about FileMaker over at FileMakerMagazine.com. My name is Matt Petrowski, wishing you best of luck with your FileMaker database. And until next time, happy FileMaking. Thank you.